All right, so let's see. I have a shard. What are the three angles as part of the six parts of triangle PK, PQR? Uh, are we talking about like angles like right angle or? Um, the, the, the name of the angles, right? So one of the angles here would be angle P, okay? Right here, angle P. All right, so we got angle P, all right, which we could also name angle QPR, all right, QPR, and notice that the P, which is our vertex of that angle, okay, PQR, all right, the P falls in the middle. So give me another angle, Vichard. Uh, I'm a, uh, can I say Q? Angle Q. Good. All right. And let's see, Yaniel or Eduardo, can you tell me another angle that's it, that, that is in this uh, triangle? We've got angle P and we've got angle Q, angle Q. Oh, Isabella, what do you got? R. Angle R. Now, Isabella, if, if I had, let's just do this. If I had um adjacent angles all right and the vertex was named r right and let's call these a b c how would i name this angle here because i can't name an angle r because it could be confused with the other one i'll do that one in green so how would i name this this lower angle the one that, that I, I scribbled in in red on. Any idea, Isabella? Um, no. No. Uh, Brianna. Brianna, can you help her out? What was the question again? All right, so I got this lower angle, the one that is is shaded in in red, okay, down here, all right. I can't name it just angle R because we've got adjacent angles, right? So what would I name this lower angle? If it had three letters. Angle what? Isabella? Would it be ARB? ARB, exactly. A, R, B, and again, R, right? R is the, um, that's the vertex, okay? So now let's talk about the sides. Sides are typically named by the segment, all right? And when we depict a segment, all right, what we're usually doing is something like, segment a b okay but in this case we've got p q and r as our endpoints for these segments so I'll, I'll i'll mark those points in red um by a show of hands who can tell me one of the sides on this triangle that, that we're working with here p q r show of hands anybody how about uh danielle or michael jernigan Danielle, Michael Jernigan, going once. Go ahead. Um, I'm not sure. All right. Well, let me ask you this, Danielle. This, this segment right here, I'll highlight it in yellow, okay? Goes from point, which point to which point? P to Q. P to Q, okay. So that is side PQ, okay? And then give me another side. Um, QR. Side QR, right? So I've got side, oops, side QR. And one more. I got one more side. Danielle, you want to give that to me? Another side, you said? Yeah. 
Um, I'll highlight R and P. It. Yep, R P. Okay, so I've got R P. All right, and what I need to do there, I'm just going to delete the A B. All right, and now I've got my three sides. All right, so that's the way we name the parts of triangles. We've got angle P, we've got angle Q, all right, I'll highlight that in green, angle Q, and then I've got angle R in dark green, then I've got segment or side PQ, and I'll mark that with three black lines, okay, so that's three black lines, one, two, three, and then I've got QR, QR, I'll do that with blue. All right, we got two blue lines there. And then I've got RP, and I'll do that in central purple. All right, with just one purple. All right, so we've got in any triangle, we've got six, we've got six parts, all right, which consist of three sides, and three angles. And when we're comparing triangles, in order for them to be congruent, what we have to have is we have to have both the side or corresponding sides and the corresponding um, angles that match. All right, they've got to be the same. For the angles, they've got to be the same measurement in degrees and in um for the sides they have to have um the same measurement or the same length so i've got p q r all right that's where i get that from okay p q r and then i've got point s t and w okay s T and W, I get that from over here, all right. So then, have a good moment. You too. All right, so our angles, you're gonna notice that angle P and angle S, all right, angle P and angle S have to be congruent. I do that with one red angle tick mark and angle Q, I'll do this with two green and angle T, okay, two green. All right, they have to be congruent. And then we've got angle R, I'll do this with three dark green tick marks, it has to be congruent to angle W, okay, which also has three green tick marks. All right, so dark green. All right, and my Q and my S we did with light green, okay. And then we've got, let's see, segment PQ. So in that case, I'll go back to my red. So segment PQ is the, the, the measurement of this side. Has to be, so that's PQ, all right. And that's got to be congruent or the same size, the same length as ST, all right. So just from the naming convention, we can see how these set up. So then I've got QR, all right, QR, which I'll try and do just below it, QR, Q, it has to be to T, TW, so QR, the length of that, has to be equal to the length of that, okay. And then in dark green, We've got one more side, which is here, all right? And I'll give three, point, three uh, tick marks there and three tick marks there. And that's got to be congruent to SW, all right? So W to S and R to P, okay? And let me just... We're going to do one red tick mark there, one red tick mark there, and we got to have the tick marks. We can't go just on what they've given us, and we'll do two light green tick marks for the corresponding parts there. 
All right, so now let's go into the quiz. All right. So <clears throat> angle Q. All right. Um, bear with me one second. I want to submit this next. And I want to go back. And let's go edit. And preview. Okay. Preview. Good. So the naming convention on these triangles, who can tell me what is the corresponding angle to Q? Angle Q. Isabella? T. T. Good. All right. And let's look at angle S by a show of hands. I've got Isabella. Let's see if we can get somebody else. Rayana, go ahead. A P. Angle S corresponds to what? P. P, yes. And on the next one, we asked for angle P, and then because we know that angle S corresponds to angle P, angle P corresponds to angle S. So I I'll give you that one. All right. Now we're talking about segment ST. ST, what, do, what does that correspond to by a show of hands? I've got Isabella. I've got Rayana. Let's see if we can get somebody else. Dylan, are you there? Bashard, are you there? Jernigan, are you there? Mike Jernigan? Oh, Bashard, go ahead. Uh, I'm kind of lost at the moment. Uh, so we, we name it another angle, right? So we're talking about side ST. I'll highlight that in yellow for you, okay, on our diagram. So side ST is right here, okay? It's also the first two letters of our naming, or when we name the triangle, triangle STW, right? So we're gonna take the same position on the other triangle. So our options here are um, PQ, SW, or QR. What would you what, what would you say correspond to ST? The first two positions on the triangle on the right. You said PQ, QR, and ST, right? Well, if, if you look at the screen, right, I've got PQ, right, right here. Yeah. I've got SW and I've got QR. Uh say SW. SW. So SW. S W is actually in the same triangle, right? S W is this line right here, but we're looking for the corresponding part on the other triangle over here. Oh, so PQ. PQ, good. Makes sense? Yeah. All right, and understand that we're, we're gonna get a little bit more complex here once, you, once we get into the postulates proving triangle congruence, uh, which is gonna be our guided notes. So PQ, that's a good job there, Bashard. Um, okay, so now um, we got segment PR. What does that correspond to by a show of hands? Kyra Colbreth, are you there? Kyra, Kyle Denson? Um, I'm confused, so right. I don't know. All right, so segment PR, let's define that. I'm gonna take my magenta highlighter, okay? And they're saying segment PR, you can see that right there, okay? So PR is this one right down here at the bottom, okay? See how I just highlighted that? Now I need to go to the other triangle and find the same segment that has the same number of ticks. Notice that PR has three ticks, three green ticks, right? Dark green ticks. So on the other triangle, what segment is named there, Kyra? It's in the same position. Did I lose you? 
Kyra. Oh, Brianna, go ahead. Oh, Kyra, yep. Can you say it again? Your right. your thing went out. All right. So we're talking about segment PR. All right. It's this bottom segment at the bottom. All right. That's PR. Now we got to go to the other triangle. Tell me which. So my options there are SW, QR, and PQ as far as segments go. Which one, what segment or what side corresponds to PR in the in the first triangle, it's PR. In the second triangle, it is what? Um, isn't it SW? SW, right? And we know that because of the three, these three um, tick marks, okay? So SW, good. Now, segment TW, by a show of hands. Oh, go ahead, Kyra, TW, what's that correspond to? Um, wait, so we find out TW? Yeah. Um, wait, let me see. Is QS? QS. Awesome. Wait. Oh, wait. Oh, no, no, no. It's QR. Oh, QR. Yeah, QR, QR. But my, my drawings are too close here, so that, that's my fault. I apologize about that. All right, now, this is a tough one right here. Angle QRP. I talked to you guys about the naming convention for, for angles. And Isabella, go ahead. W. Angle W. And how do you know that? How'd you know that this angle, right, that we were talking about, angle QRP, right? R being our vertex, right? I just highlighted that in magenta. So obviously, it is W, okay. Does that make sense to you, Isabella? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so go ahead and submit that quiz. All right, that's our warm up. And just a, a little bit of review here for uh, corresponding parts. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into. I'm going to send you this link, all right, and I'll give you guys three minutes. So I'm going to send this to you via um, uh, bear with me one second. I'm going to send this to you via Teams. Oh, you know what? I'm just I'm going to put it in the chat. I will. I'll, I'll do it via Teams. So let's go over here. And I just sent you the link. to our guided notes, all right? And this is gonna be graded. And, oh, one second, study guide. That's, is that what I wanted? No, it's not what I wanted. Bear with me, guys. I, I might've sent you the wrong one. The active notes, all right. And yeah, you've got it. So I'll change that to the preview. And I'll give you two minutes to open that up. I sent you the link. In, in Teams, it's in the chat. Brenna, I see that you said uh, SW, and that, that was a good answer there. It's Rena. Rena, sorry about that. All right. So here we go. So we're looking. <clears throat> so this is a guided notes section, and this is my pilot. All right. I want to make sure you guys are staying engaged. So the first postulate that we have is side, side, side congruent, congruence. All right. So what it says is. If three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So what I want you to do is I want you to, to, to type in to question number one exactly that postulate. If three sides 
of one triangle, and your spelling doesn't have to be perfect, are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. All right, so you go ahead and put that in. And you're going to submit that. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip this out. And we're going to talk a little bit about the side, side, side congruence postulate. All right, so I'll bring that over. And I'm going to put it in here. I want to make that bigger. Bear with me one second. So when we have two, two triangles, all right, and I need to give us two triangles. So when we have two triangles, there's one and there's another. Control Z. All right. When we're talking about the, the side, side, side postulate, all right, we're going to name these triangles A, B, C, and then this is going to be X, Y, Z, all right. The way that this will look when we're looking at diagrams is this. So we've got triangle a b c is congruent to triangle x y z and again corresponding parts all right so a and x are corresponding and b and y and c and z randall i, I see you just uh checked in i got to make sure that i add you in skyward all right um and I just sent out a link for a guided notes practice, all right? So go ahead and click on that link. And just to catch you up, you're going to, I'll walk you through it, but you're going to, in the first answer, all right, you're going to, you're going to put in the essay answer, if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So, with that being said, let me walk you guys through the way that this is going to look. So AB corresponds to XY, all right? So we're going to do one tick mark on AB and XY. Now, BC and NYZ are also congruent. So I'm going to do tick, two tick marks there, and I'm going to do it in bright green, all right? And then we've got a third side which is ac that is congruent to xz okay so that's the way they're going to look and i'll come back over here now randall when you open this up you're going to see question one all right and you're just going to take this information right here in the postulate and you're going to type that into the notes section or the the um the essay portion right in here. All right. Okay. So, and with this, this will be guided. It's a guided practice um, and it will be graded. All right. You, you're, you don't have to type, uh, you, your spelling doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but go ahead and make sure you type that in. All right, so that's the first one, side, side, side congruence. If three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another, then the triangles are congruent. Now, I want to show you this real quick, okay? Shared sides, all right? You're going to see this on quizzes and you're going to see it on tests. This is very, very important for you guys to understand. So I'll snip this out and I'm going to bring it over to Notepad, all right? And I need to show you something because if you look at this, when you look at this, what you're going to see is they've only indicated to us that PQ 
is congruent to PS, okay? That's one side. So we got a side there, we got a side there, all right? Then QR has two tick marks, all right? And RS have two tick marks. Now remember, so that's another side. So who can tell me what the third congruent side is? So we've got Q, P is congruent to side P, S. And then we've got Q, R is congruent to S, R. All right, S, R. Can any of you guys tell me the third side that's congruent? By show of hands, anybody? Is it the R? Well, R, okay. Remember, we have to name segments with both endpoints. Oh, so, so Q and S? Well, no, because QS is not connected, right? It's That's not connected. So that doesn't work. Is it S and S? What's that? Is it S and S? Well, what about this? Look at this. So where I just put... Here, I'm going to change colors. Um, we'll do it with red points. Okay. This line right here, PR, right? See this? See this line right here? That is a shared side between both of these triangles, right? You think that the, the measurement of this side for PR that is shared by both, you think that that is congruent? You think that's the same? Rihanna, what do you think? Isabella? Go ahead, Rihanna. Rihanna? It is PR? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was gonna say that because it was the only like line in the middle. And it's shared by both, right? We've got two triangles. We've got this triangle up here that I shade in in red, and then we got this triangle down here that I shade in a light green, right? So, because, and I'll do this in black, because this is a shared side, this is also congruent. That gives us the third side. So I've got side here, one, I've got side here, two, and then three, all right? And I've got side here, that is one, I've got side here, two, and we've got the third side because it's shared. So my point here, which is very important, if and when you have a shared side, all right, which I'm doing in black right now, I'll, I'll highlight in yellow, that shared side is always congruent, all right? And because of that, we can now say that triangle PQR, which is the top one, which I highlighted in red, triangle P, Q, R is congruent to triangle P, R, S. And again, this is the shared side, all right? They talk, they talk about reciprocal, but I just like shared side, all right? So that's something to, that's important. So what I want you to put down here, all right, in question number two, what I want you to say is, if two triangles share a side, if two triangles share a side, then that side is also congruent. Go ahead and type that in. If two triangles share a side, then that side is also congruent. Does that make sense? Bashard, does that make sense to you? <clears throat> Kyra, does that make sense to you? Uh, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense? Good. All right. So that's question number two. Now, now let me make this a little bit bigger. Let's go down to question number three. Now, if I remember correctly, oh no, this is good, all right. I'm gonna pull this out, 
I'm going to snip this out and we'll work for, work with it. In um, we will work with it over in, in uh, OneNote. OK, so I'll make this a little bit larger. Now. I'm going to give you three minutes. To figure out the value of M. That makes triangle HFG congruent to triangle HFK. And this is by side, side, side. Now remember something. All right. We've got a shared side. We know that that's congruent. So I'll mark that with three lines. All right. So FH. All right. FH. Is congruent on both of these. All right. We also know. That. Well, HF and HF. All right. So they they named it HF HF. OK, so that's. In red, those are the first two positions. All right. And then they tell us that FG, FG, I'm going to change colors here, FG right here, okay, FG and FK are congruent. And then they tell us that H, I need to do this this way, HG and HK, so we've got or for strangers, H K and H G. Right. These are also congruent. So what I want you guys to do, I'm going to give you three minutes here. Go ahead and put in the chat what the value of M is. All right. And they gave us equations for those lengths. We've got 7 M minus 3 and 20 M minus 12. So we need to set those equal to each other. So I'll give you three minutes. It's it's 9.52 right now, so we'll go to 9, um, 9.55.
right. All right, guys, I'm back. I'm sorry, Mr. Szyminski had stopped in. Um, we had a, a brief conversation. So we've got <clears> – I didn't have anybody upload – their mat their equation here so did anybody come up with an answer for m by a show of hands anybody no one all right so we know that segment fg all right f g okay that is congruent to segment fk all right, because they are congruent, meaning they are the, the distance for these lines are the exact same. We can now solve for M and the way that we solve for M and I'm a, you guys got to get ready. OK, I need you guys to walk me through the algebra here. The equation that we set up here is going to be 17 M minus three. OK, that comes from there. All right is equal to 20 M minus 12. All right, so since they're equal, we can set them equal to each other, which I just did in the equation. And now it's just a matter of solving for M. So what I wanna do is I wanna move 17 M over to there, and I wanna move my 12 over to the other side. So who can help me with the algebra here? By a show of hands, what would be my first step? I want to move 17M over to the right-hand side. Show of hands, show of hands. Kyra, go ahead. Um, do you put um, negative 17M? Yep. And then yeah, on the same side? I do that to both sides, right? So 17M minus 17M is going to be 0M. So that'll leave me just negative 3 on the left side. And then I've got 20M minus 17M, right? Mm -hmm. So what's that? 3M. 3M, right? Minus, minus 12. 12. Okay, and now I need to move my minus 12 over to the left side. How do I do that? You would plus 12 under the... Yeah, under the negative three. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that cancels out, right? And now I've got 12 minus three, which is going to be nine, equals 3m. M comes down, right? Boom. Okay. And what's my next step? Divide. Divide by? Uh, three. Yep. Yeah. So I divide by three. And now I've got m is equal to nine divided by three. So the answer there is three, okay? That's the answer for M, all right, which we're gonna put back into, into our guided notes. So what I do wanna do is I just wanna double check my answer, okay? So I got I know now know that M equals three, so I got 17 M minus three, that's from there, right? And 17 times three, what's that gonna be? Um, 30 plus 21, so is that 51? 51 minus three, does that sound right? Um, I think so, let's see. So 51 minus three is 48, okay? So this side right here is 48 units, 48 inches, 48 millimeters, whatever it may be. And then I've got 20 at, 20 M minus 12. Okay, so I'll do this in dark green. I got 20 M minus 12 and 20 times three, 20 times three, because we figured out what, what, what M was, uh, minus 12. So I've got 60 minus 12, and that is gonna be 48. So my math checks out, M equals three. So I'll go back over to my guided notes all right, and here we're just going to choose three. All right, we we're able to figure that out. M equals three, and we're good. Now we've got another shared side. So this one I want you guys to do in one note. All right, 
or on on your uh, on your on your notepad or uh, yeah on, on your um, on paper all right and I want you to take a photo of it and I want you to up, up, upload that for me and remember we're, we're doing a pilot here so I really want to see um, some of the answers you guys come up with oh and guess what I need to adjust this just slightly. All right, there, there is a problem with this equation. It actually is a systems of equation and I need to simplify this for you. So instead of this, um, bear with me one second, instead of triangle GHM is congruent to MPG, what I need you guys to think about this as is triangle, and we're, we're just solving for X, all right? Don't worry about solving for, for, for Y. So instead of triangle GHM, all right, GHM, it's going to be triangle GHM is congruent to and then instead of MPG, it's going to be PGM. So triangle PGM. So GH, GH right there is going to be congruent to segment or side PG. And I've got that set up correctly. All right, so they give us an equation here. Um, 8x minus 10. All right, and that side there is going to be equal to the other side. So go ahead and do that in OneNote or do that in, uh, on, on your notes and upload that to the chat. I'll give you five minutes here. It's 10.04, so 10.09. All right. Kyra, Rayana, Isabella, Danielle, I expect you guys to upload these. So we'll go to 10.010 .10 or to 10.10. .10. Anybody need a hint on this? Um, I wanted to ask, how can you start the equation if there's two different um, variables? Oh, we're just solving for x here, right? So, oh. so the equation, right, we're using 8x minus 10 is equal to 7x plus 8. And now you just solve for x. So just solve for x here. Make sense, Kyra? Yeah. Jernigan, you getting this stuff?
Rihanna, you good with this? Yes, I'm working on it. All right. Isabella, how about you, Danielle? I'm good. You're good? Danielle? Somebody text Jernigan, tell him I'm looking for I'm him. I'm working on it. All right, good. Once you figure out the value of X, you can either just type it into the chat or you can upload your work. Dylan, you working on this? Doriana, you good? Chris Sean, you working on it? I think I got the answer. Really? I think. Go ahead. Um, negative two. Negative two. Hmm. All right. Kyra says negative two. Let's see if anybody else comes up with a different answer. I want to give. Uh, oh, actually, we got two more minutes. So Kyra says, Kyra says negative two. Bear with me one second. I got to open my door. Doriana, no problem. <clears throat> Doriana, if you want, just uh, type your uh, your answer into the chat, okay? Can you type that in for me? Dory, you there? Isabella, what'd you get? I'm still working on it. Still working on it? Okay. Danielle, how about you? All right. I'll give you guys a few more minutes. Kyra, double check your uh, your work, right? And um, plug your negative two that you, you that you found for x into the equations and see see if the equations still work. Okay. And if they don't work, it's okay. Let me know. Okay. okay. I don't really understand the things right now. I've been trying to do it, but. OK. I think I'm going to just wait. Let me explain. I will understand. All right, Randall, um, give me. I want to take two more minutes. I, I, I want to see if I get any more answers in here. Okay. Um, but remember, the sides, right? Mm -hmm. Side PG. Okay, and side GH, 
those are congruent, meaning they're equal. So since they're equal, you can set up the equations. 8x minus 10 is equal to 7x plus 8. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we're just solving for x. It's ju it just becomes an algebra qu uh, problem. Oh, is that easy? <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad, right? I was I was doing a whole bunch of. <laughs> I feel like I'm stupid. But... No, no, no. Hey, thank you. Hey. So just set that up and see what you come up with. Okay, so let's um, let's dive into this. <clears throat> so we had Kyra, who was our brave soul. All right. Wait, did I say negative two? Yeah. What did you get? Oh, I meant two. Oh, positive two. So did you find that by, by double checking your answer? Yeah, because I was wondering. I had wrote positive two, but I. Had negative two okay now, listen you know what i'm just happy you're you're engaged here so randall randall you want to walk me through yes. this math uh let's give it a try all right so so what i've got two congruent sides right meaning that they're equal the measurement is equal so what what is my equation 8x minus 10 equals 7x plus 8. 7x plus 8, right? Now, what's my next step? Uh, I can't see this one. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, you're not sure. Now you're going to put the 8x on the other side. For a second. Okay. So I say minus 8x here, right? And minus yes. 8x here, correct? Yes, sir. All right, and that cancels out. That gives me negative 10 is equal to, what's 7x minus 8x? Minus 1x, but it's equal to only x. Negative x, right, plus 8. Now, I need to move my 8 over to the other side. How, how do I do that? You just put minus 8 on both sides. Minus 8 on both sides, okay. So I've got negative 10 minus 8, which is going to be negative 18, is equal to negative x. Ooh. Ooh. Huh. All right. So. Uh -oh. wait, 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 let's take. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, mm, there's, something, there's something that is wrong over there. Negative 10. Yeah, it is something that is. Hold on one second. I just want to take a look at something. Oh. Yes. So X equals 18. So let me just clean this up a little bit. So I got negative 10 minus 8 is going to be negative 18. All right. That cancels out, which equals negative x. So if I divide by negative 1 on both sides, right, I come up with x equals 18. All right. Yes, x sir. equals 18. So the answer here is going to be x equals 18. So go ahead and plug that in. Now, Kyra. Kyra. Yes. So you got you got uh, plus two, right? Yeah. Can you walk me through the equation that, that you originally set up? Okay, so I'm thinking because I okay, when I had wrote down the equation, I had put 
8x minus 10 equals 7x minus 8. Oh. It, was, it, it was plus. So that's why it changed down to 2. So, so, so let's figure that out. Now, I always I always move my, move my smaller numbers over to, to the bigger side, right? So I'm going to say mm -hmm. minus 7x, minus 7x, okay? And that gives me x minus 10 equals negative 8. And we're going to add 10 to this side. We're going to add 10 to this side. And I've got x, that cancels out, equals 2. And... If I go over to the to the, the answer, right, it doesn't give me the opportunity for an x equals two in the multiple choice. So I I know that I have to go back and double check. And Kyra, Kyra, go ahead and do something real quick. Go ahead and do what? Mute your mute your microphone because we're getting feedback. So guys, this goes for all of you, right? Kyra simply tra um, transposed the equation incorrectly. That happens all the time in math. I can tell you that was I, when I was in college taking chemistry, taking physics, uh, differential equations, I did that all the time. So when it's multiple choice and you get to the bottom and, you, and the answer you came up with doesn't match where you are, okay, what, the, 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 the given options, you got to go back and, and, and check, start with the actual equations. Geez, did I, did, did I trans, transpose something here? So Kyra made a really, really simple mistake. She got the right answer from, from an algebraic standpoint, but it was just simply changing a sign from negative to positive or positive to negative. Not a big deal there, Kyra. I, I love the fact that, that you were engaged, and I love the, the fact that, that you showed us something that gave me something to talk about. So really good work there. All right. So let's go back to our guided practice. All right. X equals 18. Now, next one. Okay. So we are looking at the side angle side postulate. All right. Let me sniff that out real quick. Side angle side. So I'll bring this over into... Um, into OneNote, okay? And what I want you guys to type in the box, all right? I want you to type in the box th what this postulate says. And the postulate says, if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. This is the side angle side uh, uh, postulate for congruence of triangles. So let me show you guys exactly how this is going to look when I've got my two triangles. So I'll pull this over here. All right. So I got two triangles and I'm going to name it the same as they have it. So it's A, B, C. And then I've got EFD down here. So E, F, D. All right. Now, we've got side angle side. So we've got side AB is congruent to EF. Side BC is congruent to FD. All right. And then we've got, oh, side angle. So my angle B is congruent to angle F, okay? So B and F are congruent, all right? So I've got side, angle, side. They have to go in order, all right? Side, angle, side, all right? All right, so I got side angle side, I've got side angle side. And again, what you need to put into the guided notes is if two sides are included, um, two, if two sides and the included angle. So the included angle is 
we've got one side and we've got one side. The included angle is this right here. Let me uh, highlight that in yellow for you. That is included in those two sides. Same thing here, it's included. But again, side, angle, side, they have to go in order. So we've got point one, two, and three, side, angle, side. All right. So go ahead and write the um, write in the box. If two sides and the included angle did angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle in the other triangle, then the triangles are congruent. All right, go ahead and type that in. <coughs> and let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this is an important point. Instead of going- Can you go to, back? Yeah. And again, I, I, I don't care about spelling here. This is, these are notes for you guys to be able to use. And you, you can see what I copied. I, I just copied this information right here in the postulate. Um, I have a question. Yes. So our grades, they're different on Canvas and Skyward. By the end of the nine weeks, will you have our like final grade put in the Skyward? Um, you'll have a, yeah, definitely into Skyward, right? Now, they may not align perfectly because I may have other, uh, oh, well, one of the things is um, I give you guys class participation, right? So on a day where you participated, um, I gave you five extra points and, and on certain days where maybe I called on you and you didn't answer, I might minus five points. Those participation grades are gonna be added or subtracted from your actual grades that, that show up in, um, in Canvas. Cause so, on Skyward it says I have a D, but then on Canvas it says I have an A. All right, well, I'll, I'll take a look at that and just send, send me a, a message here on Teams after class. I'll take a look at it and see um, what it is. Oh, and I, I bet you in Skyward, what'd you say you had? A D. Oh, um, refresh that. I don't know if that's correct. We'll, we'll talk more about that. Again, send me a message. I'll look at it after class and we'll dive into it. Okay, and it's not just your class though. Like my other teachers say that Canvas is more accurate and that they have to line the grades up before the nine weeks ends. Yeah, I, I, again, I, I, I need to look at your individual situation and I'll give you a full explanation on that, all right? Okay, thank you. Good, okay, so question number five, all right? Guided, guided practice, if two sides of an included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Now, the next problem, before we do that, that's number six, all right? I want to go to number seven. I want to show you guys something. This is important for you guys to remember. Before, we spoke about a shared side, all right? Now, we're going to talk about vertical angles. These are um, standalone situations, all right, or uh, one-offs, but you have to remember. So the shared side, all right, the shared side, what I gave you was we had a triangle that looked like this, all right, and then we had a second triangle, and we, if you guys remember, I'll highlight it in yellow, the shared side, okay, the shared side is congruent, all right? So for side, 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 or, or any other postulates, we know that if we have a shared side, 
that shared side is going to be congruent between the two triangles. Now we've got another theorem, and this is the vertical angles theorem. And I want you guys to put this into your notes on number seven. If two angles are vertical, okay, or opposite, all right, then they are congruent. So essentially what we have, all right, is we've got two angles or two lines, right? Oops, that's not what I wanted. So no matter how I move this, okay, the vertical angles, all right, the vertical angles are gonna be congruent. When I was growing up back in, when, when we had to do uh, math with, with uh, rocks and chisels, they called them opposite angles, okay? So the opposite angles are congruent. All right. So, again, what I want you to put in your, in your notes here is if two angles are vertical, then they are congruent. We covered that back in September or October. So if two angles are vertical, then they are congruent. And we got about five minutes here. So put that into number seven. And then now we've got, well, we're going, we're going to go back to question number six because this includes a vertical angle. So let me snip that out for you. And I want to show you the relevance of that theorem, okay? In this case, what we have, I'll make this a little bit bigger, okay? We've got vertical angles, and I'll highlight these in yellow. So you'll see this angle right here, they tell us it's 24 degrees. Who can tell me what this angle is? I'll, I'll highlight this in green. What do you guys think the measurement of this angle is? Show of hands. Show of hands. Randall? I say 24. 24. Good. All right. And listen, whenever we get one of, one of these problems, 24. Okay. Now, since they're telling us, find the value of X, all right? The value of X is down here. I'll highlight this in magenta, all right? The value of X. Since they're telling us to find the value of X that makes the triangles congruent, well, we already know we have a side. We already know we have a side. These sides are congruent, all right? So that's side and that is side, all right? Now, we also know we've got an angle that is congruent, all right, 24 and 24. So I'll do that with a single angle tick mark. And now X has to match A. So we have to figure out what the value of A is. Or, well, yeah, because they give us 24 and they give us 67. What do, what do the three angles in a triangle add up to? Who can tell me? Three angles in a triangle add up to what? What's the sum of the three angles within a triangle? Dylan, are you there? Randall. Randall. Yes. What do the, what do the, what is the sum of the three angles of any given triangle? That's hard. <laughs> no, it's not hard. Uh, can I guess? Yeah. 180. 180. That's a pretty good guess right there. Remember. <laughs> you got it. All right. So, since A corresponds to D, right, we know that this, this triangle has 24, 67, and we're also going to call this X. 
All right. So 180, right, is equal to the three angles. So I know I got 24. I got 67 plus. Can anybody t tell me what that's going to be? But the whole thing. 91 equals 180 plus X. Oh, Jatrisi said 90. That's pretty good, Jatrisi. Well, 67 and 24, right? 60 and 20 is 80, and 7 and 4 is 11. So that's 91, right? So it's 91 plus X equals 180. So I subtract 91 on this side. I subtract 91 on this side, right? And 180 minus 91 is going to be 89 is going to equal X. So this angle right here, okay, is going to be um, 89. And we got angle, angle, side. So I've got angle, 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 side, 89. And we know that it's going to have to be 89. So I go back here and I select 89. All right. We already did the vertical angles theorem. Oh, all right. Uh, oh, so we got three minutes here. The reason why I'm showing you this, I'm going to snip this out. Don't forget, vertical angles are congruent. And now, one more exception. All right. And I really just want the triangle portion of this. Whenever we have a straight line and we've got two angles that are terminated on it. All right. So, you know what? Let me grab. Um, I just want to grab just the angle just to eliminate some confusion here was number 789 yes 89 so here i'm going to make this a little larger so whenever they give us a diagram that looks like this where we've got two angles that fall on a straight line the straight line is this one here at the bottom okay so randall you just told me that the three angles in a triangle add up to 180 and what does yes, it sir. what is, what does a straight angle what what's the measurement of a straight angle 90. no a straight and this is not angle. haiti in haiti it's it's only 90 right yeah don't forget look our coordinate plane right we go this far it's 90 degrees right we go this far what's what's the measurement of that uh no 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 wait what 180 oh. right so we know that the Oh, all right. Oh, and this, see, we've got we, we, we've got our, our square tick mark, right? That tells us that's 90 degrees, right? That's a right triangle there. What do you think this angle is here? If that's 90, and we know that the total straight angle is 180, what is the other side? <laughs> Mm -hmm. the other side this other angle right here if this side is 90 and the total is 180 180 minus 90 is going to be 90 that's right okay yes. so that's that's an important piece of the puzzle okay if we've got two angles that fall on a line the angles are going to be supplementary, meaning that they add up to 180. So in this case, we've got a 90 degree angle. The other side is going to be 90. All right. So if we've got two angles that terminate and fall on, on, on a straight line or a straight angle, they're going to be supplementary, 
meaning they add up to 180. So if we have, what did I say? When we have two angles, inclu two included angles on a straight line, if we have two included angles that fall on a straight <coughs> line, they are supplementary, meaning the sum of those two angles is 180. So if angle one equals 100, then angle two would equal 80. All right, guys. Well, listen, class is done. Um, just go down and uh, go to the last question. I had a few more pot or a few more to cover, but question 12 put um, put true. I completed this today. Click true and submit that quiz or submit those guided notes and I will update that those in Skyward later this week. Good job today guys. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Wait, what if we didn't finish? We're, we're okay. Um, you, 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 oh, well, you kind of know the pattern, so you can do that for homework. Just go in and um, copy the postulates. All right. So we got a few more postulates that we didn't cover. No. Copy the postulates in into the notes section, and then then you can submit it. You can do that a little bit later. Okay. Thank you. I already submitted it. For, for all you guys that were well, I already participated, I, I'm not going to hurt you here on this grade. This was really participation. It was a pilot, and I wanted to make sure we were keeping you engaged, and I think overall we did a good job. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Have a great day. You too. All right. Bye-bye.